Please join me in prayer. Holy Spirit, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, the actions that we undertake in the world around us, be reflections of the new hope we have in this season from you. Amen. So this evening I'm trying something a little different, and we'll see how it goes. Um, as you may or may not know, our second service this evening, uh, our 9 o'clock service, is going to be shared with the Methodists at First United Methodist Church. And so I'm looking forward to that, actually. Mark, the pastor there, and I are friends. Um, and normally, he told me what he usually does for Christmas is he writes a Christmas poem. And so I thought I would give that a shot. It's been a long time since I've written a poem, as may be soon apparent. Uh, but I thought, <laughs> since that is what I'll be doing at our late service, that's what I have also this evening. And so um, here we go. Matthew tells it this way, and Luke would say otherwise. John starts with the Big Bang because John. And Mark, so hurried, has nothing to say. But Matthew has it like this. The ketubah is signed, promise is made. Joseph knows something is wrong. Mary is showing and should not be. He can't explain this to his father, Jacob, nor Hashem forbid Grandpa Mathan. Proud men who negotiated this marriage in good faith, in their good names. And Mary is lovely. And her father, a well-known man in David's city. And so when whispers about Mary began, these well-known men decided they would punish Mary for breach of contract, send her away before she ruined them. And so Joseph needed to arrange things quiet, give her what chance he could, hope for her father's mercy. And one night, pondering, Joseph felt a heavy hand upon his shoulder, and a particular fear gripped his heart a shock of cold water, stealing his breath. No, Joseph, you cannot turn her away. You will bear shame for my glory. She will bear glory for my name. You are now part of a story millions you don't know will proclaim. Now your life changes forever because I am always the same. You will be a father for a father, but what I give you will return to me with tears. And then you will know she named him right, God with us, because I am. Trembling, Joseph stumbled home, and it happened just as the voice said. And so the pregnancy was quiet and the exact dates smudged, the ketubah hidden, where possible rumors denied. Honor salvaged, or so they judged, for the well-regarded men, at least. Mary saw everywhere the hard eyes like birds, the narrow glances she caught, all the whispers she heard. She's ruined. It's only her fault. Rather, his fault, others demurred. As at Joseph, they laughed in the market and hissed as he passed by the door, and they chuckled over him when absent, warned their own sons not to be Joseph's. Whispered laughs rolled along like a torrent, but Joseph would say nothing more. A long day dawned and night fell. When the child finally came, and Mary gave a cry so loud that when Joseph heard it, it opened up the sky. He was startled with the other men by the sound of a shattering rod and a crumbling tower. 
of one liberated by God, of the hungry suddenly fed, the meek in a moment in power, of homecoming for those who had fled. It reminded Joseph of Mary's song they were singing back home, though it's really the child's song, she said. Later, when Mary was more steady, she asked for the child to hold, anointed him with her sweat, and said, Little Emmanuel, you are with us. Don't name him yet, she was told, but I know his name already. We're going to call him Jesus. According to Matthew, it came to pass, and no one called this one, by the way. Strange wizards came visiting. Perhaps they'd learned of Hashem during exile times, or they were long-lost cousins of Abraham. Whatever they might have known of wizardry, they knew the stars well, and the times of their turnings. But they couldn't be sure of specifics. They'd been asking around. They'd met a local king easily. He greeted them somewhat greasily. Imagine their embarrassment when they learned the newborn king was not his son. Kings do not take that well. But the scribes had been helpful, and now in this city of bread, built around Rachel's tomb, where little David had once laid his head, is there not some newborn king? Locals rolled their eyes, made a sign to ward off evil, and pointed the way to the home around which strange stories swirled. And Mary, bold as bold, and Joseph, shrugging, yes, presented their little one. And the wizards, in turn, the dust of Persia still on them, bowing, they gave three tokens. Standing out in that land of fields and olive groves like jewels, Gold for the king, perfume for the living, incense for the dead. And then, they said, they would need to go home by another road. That night their dreams spoke, woke them in a sweat. The king would know of this other king, weed of Jesse, swift to grow. He would tear down his golden house and build another, and he will react as a tyrant, and the streets would turn violent, and no family with a little one would be safe. Following the deep tread of footprints laid down by ancestors a thousand years ago and more, Mary and Joseph and Jesus fled westward into Egypt, where the more terrible tyrant, Caesar, could keep their own tyrant at bay. The news out of Judea was awful, so the Hebiru foreigners settled in for a long asylum stay. Mary taught, Joseph labored, Jesus grew, and they waited until the day a dream again took hold, and they were told the false king is dead. And now Rome rules Judea direct, and so it is a time for the king to return. They cross the Sinai again, every stone named in songs they knew, stumbling over stories. Mary sang them, Joseph recited them from memory. The landmarks of wilderness, the stony graves of their people, mythic footprints of Exodus, And Jesus remembered. And so they came to the promised land, past Moses' unmarked tomb. One last time the dream took hold, on the edge of lands they knew. A last bit of life-saving bad news. David's city is closed to you. And after they wept by the roadside, Joseph sought what to do. They're hiring laborers in Galilee. 
No one knows us there to whisper or laugh. Mary nodded. We live by dreams. We can't stop listening now. And there Jesus grew. A branch from the stump of Jesse. A new vine from deep roots. Working as a laborer. Causing a stir at the temple. And practicing his teaching voice. And as the curtains close... Matthew has given us some lesser-known themes of Christmas for our holiday pondering. Tyrants lie, and tyrants fall, and hope is born in spite of them. Violence fails, and the violent fail, and God goes seeking refuge. Dreams might save your life if you follow them, and strangers bring gifts if you welcome them. Amen.